On this episode of This Week in Hockey East, we take you through our marquee matchup on Friday night, Hockey East on Nesson between number five, Maine, and number two, Boston College. We take you through our monthly awards for October, as well as go through the slate of other Hockey East matchups this week. That's all coming up next on This Week in Hockey East. Thank you for joining us. I'm Bridget Prue alongside Jim Connolly, and we'll get right to our first matchup of the night. It's our main event 30 minutes from now. So stay tuned for number five, Maine, and number two, Boston College getting into action this weekend at Connie Forum. And Jim, I know you know all about this matchup. Can you start by taking us through number two, Boston College so far? Yeah, even before I get there, I'm just going to say, hey, what timing that Maine jumps into the top five. So this becomes a top five matchup in the country. Um, listen, this this is as good of a he heavyweight battle as you'll get early in the season. I think what's really interesting for me is Boston College. And, you know, teams play tough schedules right out of the gate. Their non-conference slate can be tough. Boston College has played every one of their game except one against a nationally ranked opponent. They've played four games against the top 10 of the nation already. Now they have two more against the top five and they're three and one in that. I mean, you come out of that playing as well as this Eagles team is everything seems to be rolling. Let's, I mean, get into their goaltending. How was goaltending going to get better? It actually did. And I, I feel like right now, just what we are seeing, you know, on the back end for Boston College is fantastic. Their penalty kill one of two teams that has played more than a couple of games that hasn't let up a single power play goal all season. And the players, you know, Perot, three goals last weekend against St. Cloud. James Haggins, he's living up to everything that they believed he would be. Four assists last weekend, eight points thus far in, in, you know, in his last four games. This team is absolutely rolling. Now, they're going to face a main team that's rolling as well, and you can take us through them. Yeah, they're coming in off of a weekend sweep at Merrimack. They outscored them 11 to nothing, a 5 to nothing win on Friday, a 6 to nothing win on Saturday. So that's two shutouts up there at Alphond Arena, and that's what bumped Maine to that number five spot up into the rankings so that this is a top five matchup, like you mentioned, Jim. And uh, that sweep of Merrimack, Main posting back to back shutouts for the first time since 2010 2011, and the first time with the same opponent back to back as Mercyhurst all the way back in 2002. So, uh, that weekend they were able to lean on goaltending quite a bit. Uh, in net, Alvin Boya start, has started all seven games for this main Black Bears team so far. Uh, 1.28 goals against average, that's the best in Hockey East. Uh, 941 save percentage, that's third best in hockey east and so i guess we'll be seeing pretty much one of the best goalie matchups in the country this weekend with him taking on jake fowler and both Boya, uh boya and fowler are in the top three in both of those categories for for goalie stats with goals against average and save percentage and both lead hockey east with two shutouts apiece and then special teams will be an interesting matchup i think in this one because uh on the main side of, of the special teams, they have a, a power play that's been clicking. Nine power play goals in six games. They're 26.5% uh, on the power play, and they had five power play goals last weekend against Merrimack. So it, it started to really work for them. And one guy that you need to keep an eye on on the main power play is Thomas Friel. Uh, six power play goals, and he's always setting up uh, other guys on his unit to score. So he's got a lot of assists on the power play as well. Uh, definitely got to keep an eye on there. And then the penalty kill for Maine, fourth best in Hockey East at right around 89%. So once again, this matchup is going to be, it, it, I'm, I'm, I think like it could go either way. It could be high scoring because both of these teams have guys with firepower, but also they have such great goaltending that it kind of leads me to believe maybe this could be a goalie battle and a defensive battle between these two teams. And I mean, so far against ranked opponents, uh, they swept number seven Quinnipiac and their streak for Boston College uh, in the last seven meetings. Maine has won that battle. They are 5 0 and 2 against BC over those last seven times that they played. And there's not a lot of opponents in the country for Boston College that can say that they have a winning record over the last few years. So that uh, that alone is pretty impressive. I also get into, you know, 
thinking about this matchup and thinking about Maine on the road. And they have gotten better at their road play. This used to be a team that was not very good away from the Alphon. And now they'll get to test it in one of what will arguably be one of the best environments in the league. I, I know that last year, one at verse two BCBU, when they got to face each other at Conti, that was one of the best environments I ever saw in college hockey. I kind of expect that again this week. Those fans at in Chestnut Hill have been packing it in all year. They're creating a great uh, environment, a really tough to play in Conti Forum. I go back to some of the really good BC teams of the early 2000s, mid 2000s, you know, 2008, 2010, 2012. Those are all national championship teams that did not put in crowds like this current Boston College team is doing. So I just look at the environment that we're going to see at Conti Forum on Friday night and again on Sunday afternoon as it should just be electric, absolutely elite. Yeah, and, and Maine fans travel really well, too. Oh, so do they I'm, ever. But it's going to be a tough to, ticket to find. That's going to be a really hard resale ticket on the market. I think so. I think it's going to be full. Maybe we see another sellout um, because those Maine fans, they'll drive the five hours to, to come watch their team, uh, which uh, should make for a very interesting dynamic in the crowd this uh, for this matchup tonight. Uh, like I mentioned, puck drop coming up in just a little bit on that one and should be a great one. So tune in immediately following the game. Uh, more to come on this week in Hockey East. Now it's time to preview our Saturday showcase of women's hockey. That's going to be number 10 UConn heading to Matthews Arena to face off against Northeastern in what is a rematch of the Hockey East Championship game last year. And Jim, these are teams that play each other tough over the past few seasons. UConn had a hard time getting over, getting past that Huskies opponent at Northeastern because they reigned for so long as the best team in Hockey East, but they were able to do it last season with a one to nothing overtime win over Northeastern in the Hockey East Championship game. Arguably one of the best one to nothing games uh, I have ever watched. You think, you know, fans love goals. We know that. But I, I think of that game and what Chris McKenzie's squad was able to accomplish. And finally, that's a monkey off the back, right? You, know, you, you get one of those mental blocks when you can't beat a certain opponent. And I just think that that one single win, and it's not just a single win, it's a championship. And they did it at home. They did it in front of an unbelievable crowd at Toscano. Uh, I think, you know, of what Chris McKenzie has done with this program in 12 seasons. You know, he, I remember him when he was a men's assistant at UMass Lowell under Blaze McDonald's. Then he went to UConn and he built this program. And build is a real strong term because it included building an entirely new rink. And I, I still remember going to the groundbreaking for Toscano and talking with Chris McKenzie that day. And I said, hey, this is pretty good for you. He said... Jimmy, you don't even understand. This is really going to change our program. And it's done it quick in, in such a, a high impact way. Looking at this team and the, the great talent they continue to recruit at UConn, it's nice to see Northeastern have some sort of a big time pushback from, from an opponent that's not maybe one of the teams down the street. It's not BC, it's not BU. This is UConn, a team that we think about women's basketball, we think about men's basketball, maybe sometimes soccer, baseball. We don't think about maybe women's hockey. We now think about UConn women's hockey consistently because of what Chris McKenzie and his staff have been able to build down in stores. Yeah, and I think that UConn in general, the culture for sports there and the fan base, it's, it shows up uh, really well. And once again, no matter who finishes first in uh, Hockey East regular season, Toscana will host the championship yes. game. They've predetermined the site. So, uh, you know, if UConn makes it, they'll be playing in front of a, a home crown. So all the better for them. And both of these teams, it, it wouldn't surprise me if they met in the playoffs again. They're both in the top end of the Hockey East standings coming into the week. Uh, but Northeastern has struggled a little bit in back-to-back -back games. They've especially had their issues in the second game of the back-to-back. -back. So their record uh, in those series, the second night, they have one win, which is against Holy Cross, and four losses. Whereas in the first nights of those series, they have five wins and that's it. So they're coming out strong on night one and then they're having a little bit of a letdown 
in night two of those series. So it's about becoming a little bit more consistent from night to night. And obviously playing back to back is not easy. So uh, those are some learning curves in the early parts of the season that teams have to find a way to get over. So that's where Northeastern is right now. And uh, they're coming in as a team that's figuring out their goalie situation after the loss of Gwen Phillips, who's now going to go play professionally. Uh, they have had Paige Taborski make a majority of the starts. She's had nine starts this season. And then obviously uh, in the other side, you could have Tia Chan or Megan Warner, and they're both playing really good hockey quite a, uh, again this season, the same way that they did last year. But when it comes to trying to make sure you have a consistent effort, I think they can lean on a few players. And in particular, uh, Skylar Irving, the captain, uh, she's been one of Northeastern's most consistent contributors this season. She had a goal and an assist last weekend against UNH. She's had a point in most games for Northeastern this season. And then there's the rookie, Eloise Caron, coming in to November after being distinguished as the Hockey East Rookie of the Month in October. She has some firepower to her game. She has some speed um, that she can use to try to help that first line create more production because Northeastern has been shut out three times this season. So it's about getting on the board in some of those games with some goal support. Uh, in this matchup, we have, this will be a Friday-Saturday matchup, but the teams will meet once more uh, for the last time in the regular season on February 1st, and then potentially again in the playoffs. It's time to take you to our Jersey Mike's as sub above player of the week, and that's going to be Sammy Tabor from Boston College. Uh, she was the Hockey East player of the week last week, two goals and two assists in BC's 7-3 win over Merrimack last Saturday, and Tabor, now a sophomore, leads the Eagles with four goals, seven assists, and 11 points. That's tied for third most points in Hockey East. And she also led BC last season in points as well. So adding on to a good freshman season with a quick start out the gate for her, her sophomore year. And coming up on this week in Hockey East, we'll take you around Hockey East, presented by Boston Harbor Hotel. It's time to go around Hockey East presented by Boston Harbor Hotel. Visit HockeyEastOnline.com for your chance to win championship tickets in a two-night stay at the Boston Harbor Hotel. And so we'll take a look at some of the men's matchups this weekend. Number 17, UMass Lowell taking on number nine, BU. Big series for both of these teams. You're talking a Lowell team that's coming in hot. Uh, five straight wins. This is the best start, which is, it blows my mind, the best start under Norm Bazin in his 13 plus seasons. That's crazy. The, the last time a UMass little team had this hot of a start, Norm Bazin was in uniform. He was a senior, 1993-94. So th they're playing well. And, and right now, I, I, I just look at Henry Welsh as being the backbone to this team. Uh, people forget sometimes that he was their goalie in the Hockey East Championship game during the COVID season when Lowell, in front of no fans, lost one nothing to UMass for the Hockey East Championship. He has backstopped this team. For Boston University, though, this might be the get-right weekend they need. Uh, Michigan really handed it to them at home last weekend. They've got to find a way. Jay Pandolfo needs to get more of a consistent effort out of his team and stay disciplined. Took way too many penalties last Friday night. Yeah, I was at that Friday night game. I was I thoroughly enjoyed myself, but certainly uh, that third period, too many penalties, a five minute major that definitely hurt their chances of winning that game because at, at that point, I think it was tied one to one uh, yeah. and it kind of went downhill from there. So uh, that's going to be a good one. UMass Lowell against uh, Boston University this weekend. Another one to keep an eye on UVM at number 18 UMass and Vermont played a really close weekend series with UConn. They had an overtime win one nothing on Saturday, then a six to five uh, loss in overtime on Sunday in a game in which they scored the first two goals. Um, but then there was a little bit of a let up in their game. So they had a really strong start. Uh, but then there was some defensive letdowns. And the message from UVM head coach Steve Wiedler was, our defensive intensity has to get cranked up for this weekend's series coming up against UMass. And as for UMass, they're coming in off of a win uh, and their only game this week on Saturday against AIC, a four to three win a non-conference matchup for them. Uh, they were up three to nothing as well. And then they let AIC kind of get back into the game a little bit. 
Uh, Jack Musa scored his fourth and fifth goals of the season. Came close to a hat trick in the third period, so it was a good night for him. But UMass is looking for its first Hockey East regulation win. So far, they have that loss and a shootout win against UConn. We're still early on in the men's side of Hockey East play. And, you know, BC, only their first game in Hockey East coming up this week. But this is really when the meat of the Hockey East schedule starts uh, here in early November and then pretty much straight through. A uh, few holiday tournaments here and there, but got a lot of conference matchups coming up. So stay tuned. We go around the women's matchups this weekend and tell you which athletes took home monthly awards for October. That's all coming up. Welcome back to This Week in Hockey East. I'm Bridget Prue alongside Jim Connolly, and we'll take you through the women's slate and women's series for this weekend, and we'll start with Providence College and UNH. But first, I want to just take it a step back and look at what both of these teams did last weekend. Providence College ran into a really hot BU team uh, that is just on a win streak right now. They now also ranked after that uh, win, those two wins against Providence College. So they dropped two games, but I think there were still positive takeaways from those uh, losses, including Hope Walensky looked good in net once again for the Friars, making a lot of timely saves. And the PC power play got back on track. Audrey Knapp scored a power play goal, ending PC's 0 for 19 stretch on the power play. They had gone seven games without scoring a power play goal. So important to start to see those go in uh, with the man advantage. And UNH coming off a weekend split against Northeastern. They also split goalies in net, and that has been uh, more of the case this year than it was in the past. Sedona Blair last year played in every single game, and this year Nomi Martinez is getting some ice time, and in her second career start, she made 30 saves and got a 2 to nothing shutout against the Northeastern Huskies, and that makes her this week's night shift all-academic standout. Uh, she's had great stats through her two games this season. Uh, that was her first career win, her first career shutout. And because she's given up so few goals this season, her goals against average is under one, 0 0.79 uh, goals against average and a 972 save percentage through her 150 minutes played so far this season. Though Sedona Blair still with a majority of time in net, eight starts, um, but Hillary Witt more willing to split time in net this season and we want to remind you to join hockey east and night shift brewing on november 16th at their lovejoy wharf location which is right next to td garden for a celebration of women's hockey during the bc and bu women's game on nesson uh that's november 16th and fans can be among the first to try hockey east ale and be in attendance to win prize packs including championship tickets find more information at hockey east online Dot com. And Jim, help us go through the matchup between Holy Cross and UVM this weekend. They have just that one game on Saturday. Yeah, just a single. So this is one, I think as a coach, you kind of relish these moments because this is the series you can put everything into one game. You don't have to worry, keep it about a little bit in the tank for, for the next night. I, I, I love this Holy Cross team. Got to see them against Northeastern a few weeks ago. I think Katie LaChapelle's team really plays hard. And we know what Jim Plumer's squad always brings. Scrappy, grinded out hockey, hard to play against. I think this is one of those matchups that is sneaky good. Maybe neither of these teams are sitting there in the top 15 of the country, but I think these are two fun teams to watch get up and down the ice. And just quickly, two other series in play this weekend. Number 13, Boston College uh, has a series at Maine and number 15, BU, a series against Merrimack, like we mentioned after sweeping uh, the Friars last weekend and moving back into the rankings. Well, when we come back, we'll finish up with our short shifts presented by the Shift Group. Welcome back to This Week in Hockey East. It's almost time for puck drop between Maine and Boston College. But first, we're going to take some short shifts presented by uh, the Shift Group, helping former athletes and veterans become elite business professionals. And Jim, uh, your short shift involves Northeastern. Yeah, the Huskies, they, they struggle a little bit out of the gate. Um, and that's something that probably concerns Jerry Keefe. But I want to remind people that this is the same, very similar Northeastern team. Jerry Keefe was part of the staff back in 2015-16. They started, they had one win when they got to Thanksgiving. And then they won the consolation game in Belfast. After that, they went 20 
two and three the rest of the way, won the Hockey East Championship. So it is not too foreign to think of this Northeastern team as finding a way to rally the troops at one point in the season and just go on a run. They're built for it. There's too much talent on this Northeastern team. And my short shift has to do with our October monthly player awards and looking at the women first. BU taking three out of the four monthly awards. Lola Reed, the freshman forward, was player of the month. Her 13 points lead Hockey East. And BU goalie Callie Shanahan taking home the goalie of the month award. She led BU to first place in the Hockey East standings. Tamara Giaquinto, defender of the month. And then Northeastern's E. Luis Caron, rookie of the month with 10 points. In nine games in October, she is third in Hockey East in points right now. And on the men's side, uh, Jake Percival from UConn named the Hockey East Player of the Month with Ryan Leonard being listed as the runner-up from Boston College. And no surprise here, BU's Cole Eisenman, Rookie of the Month. His four goals in October were the most among any Hockey East freshman. Uh, And Maine's Brennan Holt, Defender of the Month. He led all Hockey East defensemen with seven points and Somebody that you talked about earlier, Jim, uh, Henry Welsh from UMass Lowell is the goalie of the month, and he put up a perfect 4-0 record in October. Listen, Welsh is the backbone of this Lowell team. I, I, I'll also hit on Cole Eisman here. Might have one of the best shots in the nation. This kid will score a lot of goals with that shot. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, When you watch him in person, it's even more noticeable that the kind of shot that he has, the release that he has. Well, that does it for this episode of This Week in Hockey East. It's time for Friday Night Hockey East on Nesson number five, Maine at number two, Boston College men face off at Connie Forum coming up next. So stay with us.